I'm here at AUSA 2016 talking with Joaquin Salas, Business Development Manager, Polaris Defence. We're standing beside the latest version of Polaris's M Razor. This variant is fitted with a diesel engine. Joaquin, could you tell us a little bit about this particular variant and the significance of the fitting for the first time of the diesel engine? Sure, absolutely, Sean. This is a vehicle that's actually been in production for a few years. We've got over a thousand uh, of them under contract with US SOCOM as well as about 20 allied countries. Um, this is a significant step for Polaris Defense because like you mentioned, it's, a, it's our first JP8 fielding in this ultralight vehicle class. And what it allows us to do then is um, field this vehicle to a larger volume of, of military services due to the simple fact that the JP8 fuel makes it compatible with the single fuel initiatives across a number of countries as well as the requirement to deploy it above or aboard both ships and aircraft due to the safety situation. Could you explain to us the differences between petrol, gas, diesel, and JP-8. Sure, absolutely, Sean. So JP-8 is a heavy fuel, very similar to diesel. This actually has a diesel engine that has been uh, configured to run JP-8 to maximum efficiency. Uh, the militaries typically use JP-8 because it's, it's readily available, it's uh, deployable, it's more stable than gasoline, uh, less explosive, um, which enables them to have more fuel in the field and only have to transport a single type of fuel, reducing the logistics burden on, on transport of vehicles out to the field. And, and so the, the initial deliveries of m have a, 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 a gas engine? Exactly. The first, so the first version of, these, of uh, m razors have gone to the field and have been deployed for a number of years. Those were all gasoline vehicles. This will be the first production tactical JP-8 vehicle. Um, in this class for Polaris Defense. And, and what engine have you selected for the vehicle? This is a Kohler turbo diesel. Polaris developed it in conjunction with Kohler and we've uh, enhanced the performance so that it matches the current m razor gasoline vehicle performance, um, but enables it to run with the heavy fuel and the advantage of the lo reduced logistics because of that. So in terms of um, torque, horsepower, that sort of thing, it's comparable to the original gas engine? Very similar performance across the vehicle capability. Yeah, exactly. That was, a, that was the mandate from our customer, which was, we like the performance of the vehicle. It needs to stay there. Just bring us the same capability in, in heavy fuel. You say around a thousand of these vehicles are currently in use with SOCOM. Could you expand on that a little bit and give us details of any other users or potential users? Sure. As I mentioned, so we've got a number of allied countries who've already got the gasoline version of this vehicle in their fleets. Uh, currently, the m or diesel is under contract to U.S. SOCOM. The Marine Corps has stated publicly that they plan to produce, uh, purchase 144 of the vehicles in order to field those to the infantry regiments. And we've also got a number of other allied countries who purchase small volumes for testing. So uh, we see a good future for the vehicle. m Razor is clearly a, a very popular vehicle with users. Um, why do you think it's so popular? Well, Sean, you mentioned the JP-8 capability of the vehicle. There's kind of one other defining characteristic of the M-Razor, and that's the fact that it's V-22 transportable. The V-22 is a, a highly mobile uh, aircraft. It, it flies uh, quite a long distance, and you can deploy personnel and equipment out of it um, in, in, in a long-range kind of deployment scenario. What this enables you to do is fold down the roller protection system and put the vehicle internally inside the V-22. That enables you to deploy a vehicle with ground forces at a long distance and have them have the ability to, whether it's provide logistics, um, maneuver personnel, uh, carry weapons, uh, carry ammunition. It provides the soldier the ability to lighten the load when he gets on the ground. And that's really a key requirement when you get there because you've got these guys deploying over such a long distance and the only have thing they have to carry their equipment when they get there is their feet and their backpack. And so this vehicle enables a lot of capability once it gets to the ground to, to lighten the load for the soldier. And is it a purpose-designed military vehicle or is it based around readily available commercial product and technologies. Well, it's a real advantage of the vehicle, and that's that it's it's 
primarily commercially available components. We, we leverage the capability of Big Polaris and provide a commercially available vehicle at low cost that's highly mobile and highly effective uh, in the field. And then it's, you enable it to be kind of an open architecture and you enable the user to do whatever they need to with it. Like I said, whether it's a medevacking casualty, carrying weapons, or, or relocating a firing position, this vehicle is extremely flexible once it gets to the field. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you.